Aid Clulo is a former British Army officer who served in a NATO role in Pristina in 2008 to 2009. He's also written a book called Under a Feathered Sky, the untold story of NATO's role in newly independent Kosovo. He joins us now from Winchester in the UK. Really good to have you with us, uh, Aid. Uh, the government in Pristina, the capital of Kosovo, is appealing for NATO to send forces to the north of the country in order to quell unrest there. Do you think that's necessary? Should NATO seriously consider this request? Well, NATO in the form of K4 have got responsibility for the entirety of, of what we recognize as Kosovo, and that includes the area north of the Ibar uh, in Mitrovica and north of Mitrovica. So if there is a requirement for K4 to deploy to uh, maintain their or, or to implement their mission, which is to um, guarantee freedom of movement and a safe and secure environment within Kosovo, then it's entirely within their right to do so. But I would say that in, in uh, the moment of crisis, K4 is a, a third responder for, uh, if you like, um, normal police, police type activity. The, you have the Kosovo police who are primary responders. You have the uh, the EU police force, ULEX, that is there as well. Um, and, and then K4, if things start getting very difficult. So uh, certainly a deployment of K4 troops is a strong signal that can be sent to both sides to de-escalate the current crisis. Um, but they have got the ability to deploy anywhere within Kosovo should they see fit. We know the latest tensions in the north of Kosovo flared after the government in Kosovo insisted that all Kosovars, including the ethnic Serbs in the north, replace their Serbian-issued uh, license plates with Kosovo-issued number plates. It seemed to be the final straw, really, in tensions that were already simmering. Ethnic Serbs believe that the government in Kosovo is looking to further marginalise these ethnic Serb minority there. Is there any truth to that? Do you think the government in Kosovo could have perhaps been uh, a bit more understanding about their concerns? Well, I mean, it's a, a deeply complex issue that really comes down to reciprocity in a way. And um, looking at that number plate issue, which is really such a small type of issue for, for such a conflict, uh, you know, to, such an, uh, a rise in tension to be uh, as a, a result of. Um, but it comes down to what Kosovans believe to be uh, an issue of, of balance. Um, they needed to change when they went into Serbia, they needed to do something to their registration numbers. And so it was felt that um, having allowed the uh, number plate issue to remain as it was for many, many years, uh, it was decided by the government in Pristina that uh, time was up and uh, and then it was uh, a perfectly normal thing for them to do because they were part of Kosovo. Uh, and actually, the one thing I think is has not really been represented or discussed very much here is that the, the majority uh, in north of the Ibar in Mitrovica and north of Mitrovica is Serbian. But a lot of people, a lot of Kosovo Serbians just want to get on with their lives and to be living where they are as part of Kosovo. Uh, there are Kosovo Serbs who are serving in the Kosovo security force. Um, Kosovo Serbs who, who live and whose families live in Mitrovica are part of the country's security force. And so a lot of the tensions that we're seeing here are being orchestrated from Belgrade. And of course, there are agitators within the uh, Kosovo Serb community uh, who are causing the images that you're seeing on the screen right now. But there is, there is a very large number of people, uh, Kosovo Serb ethnicity, who just want to get on with the rest of their lives. And in fact, uh, many Kosovo Serbs had changed their number plates, but other Kosovo Serbs then took retaliatory action against those Kosovo Serbs. So it's, it's a very, very complex issue. And I think uh, it's perfectly normal for a, uh, a sovereign government to want to impose a law across the entirety of its, uh, of its territory. OK, Aid Clulo, we will have to leave it there. But really good to get your thoughts on these rising tensions in the Balkans. Thank you for joining us.